Uh, this is called War Stories from the Front Lines. My name is Gregory Kallenberg. I work with the Prize Foundation. Um, I want, yes, there we go. 100%. Yeah. No. Um, but uh, so I just want to start with our sponsors because our sponsors are the fuel to our engine. You'll hear us say this over and over again. The other thing I want to let people know is that you will also hear this list tomorrow at 2 p.m., which is when we do the awards. That's going to be downstairs. I'm not sure which stage it is, but we'll make sure that everyone has that information. But this year's Film Prize Junior 2022 was proudly presented by the Prize Foundation, uh, LFEA, Louisiana Entertainment. Knoll Foundation, the Alta and John Franks Foundation, the Community Foundation, the Shreveport Regional Arts Council, National Endowment, Endowment for the Arts, Louisiana Office of Cultural Development, Jay Wineland Group Benefits, the Monteleone Family Foundation, Linda Goldsberry, Phillips and Kallenberg Investments, Heidi and Gregory Kallenberg, uh, that, that's why I get to sit up here, um, because I write checks to be able to do that. And then um, Sandy and Jeffrey Kallenberg. So give them a big hand. Um, again, it's been such a special uh, Film Prize Junior. For those, I don't even know if you guys know this. So um, in 2021, uh, we broke a record by moving from 38 films to 64 films. Um, this year we are showing 82 films here at Film Prize Junior. So give that a big wow. hand. Um, about 50% of those films are Title I, which is amazing to give kids resources that don't have resources, enable them to tell their stories. So these panels today have really been special in the sense that it's really given them a pathway to see which way to go. Now, we're going to show them the stumbling blocks, uh, <laughs> which is really talking about how hard it is to make films. And I am so incredibly thrilled to have the group up here that's up here um i also appreciate all you guys showing up on time um uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh so I, why don't we start with you guys introducing yourselves and then we'll jump into some more specific questions but but if you could not just introduce yourself but maybe talk about some of the film work that you've done both with film prize and, and beyond hi so um i'm hillary frazier i'm from the area of shreveport Bossier. um I am a teacher by day, but at night I like being able to help out with other film productions in the area. I've done PA work, I've been extras in a few films. Um, I was a part of 2020 Film Prize contender Green's Alley. Um, but I love being able to be a part of the filming process and being able to be a part of collaborative, creative environments. So I'm happy to be here. Thank cool. you for having me. Thank you, Hillary. Josh. Hello, I'm Josh Munz, and I've, uh, I'm a writer director of several. Uh, short films, working on actual um, uh, big films. I don't think that's what is it? Feature yeah, that's films. Right. Yeah. It's, good, it's, good, it's good to have friends in the yeah. audience, Josh. Thank you, Jaya. Yes. Um, I'm also the husband to a TikTok star, uh, Melissa Munz. She's, yeah. That's my claim to fame. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Hi, my name is Patrick Curtin. I uh, am primarily an actor and sometime filmmaker. I've uh, been doing films for Film Prize probably eight years or so. Um, also do professional film and features. Uh, had a good last year, worked on a couple of features, had a guest star spot on a network television show. So uh, that's pretty much what I do as act. So I, I want to throw the first question out to Josh. Um, what is this TikTok thing that you're talking about? No, I'm kidding. No, no. I, I actually, I, I do want to stay with you, Josh. Um, you know, it's... I think that people uh, start their process, or at least their desire to make a film, thinking that it's going to be easy, right? Um, I'm curious about if you can take it all the way back to the point where you decide you wanted to start making films, and what that was like walking into it, and what that experience was like actually producing something. So when we first started, and I mean like way back when we did like a web series, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know how to film. We barely knew how to work a camera, but we decided to make something. And we learned pretty quickly that locations will drop. People will not come through if they're not legitimate actors. Like they don't want to have like a passion for the craft. So we learned very quickly that your scheduled day will end up being chaotic if you don't have the right people in place. And so we... <laughs> After that, we were like, all right, now we're going to go to places like this, like Film Prize, and, and uh, talk to people we know who are involved in uh, the film community and get the right people for what we need. And once we did that, 
a lot of our issues kind of went away because if you have an actor who just doesn't show up and doesn't call you to let you know what happened, that's awful. That, that's <laughs> no fun, you know? And when you deal with actual professionals, you know, like Patrick over here, he's going to be on time and he's going to be there. Yeah. And, 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 and so it is, it's, it's interesting talking about those tiger traps. And Patrick, you've, of course, been on both sides of the camera. You're certainly experiencing it this year with, with Film Prize. Right. I'm curious, same question to you, walking into this, like what was sort of that preconceived notion and then what did it actually become as you sort of walked into that tiger's trap and had to fight your way out of it? Yeah, uh, it's interesting. As an actor, you see film productions from a different perspective. Um, and it really is a collaborative uh, team working with the production crew and uh, the other actors. This year, my wife and I are actually uh, producing and directing a film. And it's, it's interesting that we hadn't done it before because this is a story we felt like we had to do. Uh, we didn't want to just write a story. This story kind of came to us, and it, it became a passion project. Uh, she wrote it. We're both directing it. Both our children are in it. Uh, so we knew we wanted to make it right. So we started talking three months ago. Every night we come home from work, we sit and talk. Talk, I mean, ad nauseum, just talk. So that we knew that when we were going to get to shoot this, we had everything answered. We knew what we were going to do. Uh, it's daunting because I've seen a lot of really good work at Film Prize. And you just want to do the best you can to be able to say that you're in the same league with these people. And uh, so we take it very seriously, and you really have to. And so that's, that's where we're coming from. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny, and I, I do want to dig a little deeper into your experience as an, as an actor. But, you know, Hillary, you're somebody that I've always known as an artist, really, as a creative type. And then you popped up on the screen in Green's Alley, and, um, and it's, it's an astounding film. If, if you haven't seen it, um, checking out Abigail Kruger's Green's uh, Alley is a, is, is a super, it's a cool way to kind of see the way it can be done. I'm curious about what drew you into the acting part. What is that perspective being on set from being an actress or an actor or whatever they're saying today that's politically correct? <laughs> Um, I guess kind of pulling it back, when I was in high school, I did a lot of acting, and then after that, I never did a lot of acting, um, a little bit after that, but then what's interesting about Abigail's film is that prior to her creating Green's Alley, she created a really beautiful film called Shreve Poet, and that's actually what drew me in. I saw that film, I actually cried a little bit during it, because I felt like it was very um, indicative of what the Shreveport area is, um, and so when I found out that she was actually looking for somebody to act in Green's Alley, I jumped on the chance just like, hey, you know, I haven't acted in years, but if you want to give me a chance, I would love to kind of take a part of this. And I'm actually really thankful that she gave me that opportunity. Um, and it actually really kind of just kind of gave me a chance to try out something that I've never, I can't say I've ever like been in a film. I've done extra work and stuff prior to that, but I've never been able to um, experience something like that before and be able to work to that um, degree within yeah. a film. So, and, and 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 you know, for those who don't know Abigail Kruger, she's a filmmaker out of Washington D.C. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm curious about that that experience of walking on a set for the first time and and having to act. You know, um, anxiety inducing <laughs> at first. At first, anxiety inducing because just like, oh man, maybe they'll know I'm an imposter. And they <laughs> <laughs> just like you have serious imposter syndrome, but then you realize that everyone's just open and they're so flexible and they're so willing to help you while you're on set. And that's what I'm most thankful for for those kinds of you know projects. So um, I'm going to bounce it over to you, Patrick, because, of course, your background seems to be more acting, but you've certainly gone into the, the filmmaking side of it. With this particular project, what was that like um, hiring your kids and then having to fire them? No, I'm kidding. I mean, no, no. But no, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the, the, the uh, similarities and differences between filmmaker and then being, you had talked about the differences in being in front of the camera and that different perspective. Can you c compare and contrast for us? Absolutely. Uh, when you're acting, you uh, are telling someone else's story and you want to tell that story the best you can to honor their vision. Uh, when you are the one telling the story, you have to think who best is gonna help me tell this story. And I didn't just hire my kids because they're my kids. My son's a fantastic actor, 
Um, and this is the first chance he's had to be a lead actor. He's had some small roles in films. And, um, and my daughter, we had to drag her kicking and screaming to do a role in this. She's, my son's the actor, she's the artist. She sits in quiet and does digital art. But uh, she did a great job too, because we knew she could. But uh, directing my son, we, like I said, we talked for months. We talked to him about his character. Um, and when it came time, my wife and I, during takes, would just look at each other and go, where did that come from? I mean, he just surprised us every day with his professionalism and, and how good he did. And it's nice that you can hand your story over to somebody who takes it really seriously and, and wants to tell your vision. So when you look at that and, and you make it sound like such a sweet 70s love song, yeah. um, uh, making these things, um, I am curious about those those trials and tribulations i mean yeah. you know again you know josh threw out just really simple ones like your actor not showing up or you know not the, a location not being there um but i mean did you run i mean you know it's your family but sure. you know i mean jesus if i was making films with my family there would be divorces and murder mm -hmm. suicides all over the yeah. place but the um i'm curious if when you were doing this, was there were there just hills you had to climb and how you guys got over it, not just as a family, but as a filmmaker? Right. I, I got to be honest with you. We had one minor hiccup during the whole thing. Um, we had a fantastic crew um, that we hired people that knew a whole lot more than we did about actual filmmaking. We knew the story we wanted to tell. We knew the direction we wanted to go and the vision of it. And, and we turned it over to some people to help us do some technical things. The one major hiccup that we had was we were filming in a hotel and we had a suite uh, that we were going to shoot. And when we showed up... Well, keep in mind, this is for kids. The yeah, kids the yeah. kids are in the audience. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a large suite uh, with... Uh, there's a, a major star and, and all this stuff's going on in there. We got there, that suite, they somehow accidentally booked it. So I told my wife, and she's, she's the one that gets a little more viscerally upset. I kind of try to keep it inside. <laughs> and uh, so I went to the front desk, the people that were working with us, and they found us another suite. And Susie said, go look, see if we can shoot in it. And I got up there and I went, this is a whole lot better than the one we had. And it was actually two suites that were connected. And so we had this, and so I went down and, and Susie and I started talking about this and we kind of rearranged the shot on the fly and turned it into this really great one shot tracking shot with about 10 extras who we gave them things to do. And, um, it turned out to be a, a kind of a blessing in disguise. It turned out better. And I, and I think that happened because we were prepared for things to go wrong. And, and luckily, that was the only thing that really did go wrong. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious, Josh, when, when, you know, Patrick talked about almost it's what is it, the plan for the, hope for the best and plan for the worst type of thing. And certainly with the way you started your career and in and, and filmmaking and making some of the films that you've made, is that an adage that sort of rings true for you? I mean, do you see yourself as somebody who gets lucky more than good, or is it something that the planning really takes care of a lot of that, and you're, you're prepared for the dips that could possibly happen? Right. Can I do something real quick that's kind of gross? It's hard uh, for me to talk with gum in my mouth, so yes. I'm going to just put it in this room. Uh, okay, uh, okay. And then that that, that yeah. um, we'll, we'll look away. Yeah, there there we go. Go. Don't worry. That yeah. keepsake. We'll just make sure that that I'm makes it to this the right home place. Regardless, so. <laughs> it's got out of a pandemic. Yeah, I'm sorry, That's right. It's all right. It's all in the gum now, Hillary. <laughs> Thank you, Jaya. So, the question was, do I get lucky? Well, I mean, again, I, I think, I think. <laughs> And again, we've really taken this way past what Film Rights Junior is supposed to be. But I will tell you that, um, you know, Patrick talked a lot about a minor hiccup and how the minor hiccup really became more of a blessing in disguise. You've done a lot of projects, um, you know, I could go through the list and I, as a filmmaker, could imagine all the things that could possibly go wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how you mitigate those things or if they just go wrong and you just find a way to, to power through. Oh, it's about powering through for sure. So like we had a, a day where it would not stop raining 
and constantly downpour for 10 minutes at a time. Well, and which, which film was this? This was like? Sam and D's. Okay, I was going to ask yeah. you. Sam it was D's. predominantly outside because it's a, it's a car lot. He's a, a car salesman. And every time it would rain, it was not supposed to. Like, we checked days before, and, you know, Louisiana kind of just dictates whatever it wants when it comes to rain. So we had to go inside this tiny little, little hut, wait it out, and then we'd run out, film a scene as quickly as possible, go back in, and this was like for, I don't know, like several hours, I would say, and we only had the location for that last day. That was it. After that, we did not have that location, so we had to get what we had. So we had to rewrite a scene that had to take place inside of the area instead of outside. That was the big kind of change. So, so how can people still see uh, Sammy D's? Are you guys up on uh, anywhere where people can uh, Sammy D's is currently not available. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to build the hype for it and then drop it at the it's peak. It's a great film. Yes. Though. Yes. Yes. That's... So it really isn't available. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's in a thumb drive in his pocket. Um, but the... Um, uh, Hillary, s same question to you, but from the acting side anything at Green's Alley I mean I again you guys it was a pretty intricate shoot um, it was I had heard that it was elongated in places maybe it wasn't supposed to be elongated so I'm, I'm curious about your perspective it, watching Abigail power through but also you powering through as an actress too and holding it together um, okay so what exactly is the question well just thinking about the trials and tribulations of being an actress on the other side and and watching the filmmaker struggle through but also like what you're being asked to do as an actress to make sure that you can be successful? Um, I guess the best way to think about it, and I hope I'm answering the question properly, sure. uh, be open and flexible to whatever the director wants, what the crew needs. Um, and the director also needs to be flexible with working with the crew who may be a little bit more privy to some stuff. Um, we did have a really, really long night on a Saturday night. We were up there probably until about one or two because we were trying to get a very specific shot. And it's actually amazing the amount of camera work that went into it because it was supposed to be a morning shot, but we had missed the opportunity to do the morning shot. So they had to get very specific lighting in one of the alleyways to make it seem like it's the sun is rising. Um, so you just basically have to be adaptable, be flexible, be ready to not have a nine to five because acting is not a nine to five at all. It is a, you are there for as long as they need you there for. Um, so it had to have been at least 12 plus hours that we were out there filming. So you just have to kind of be open and willing to adapt with whatever everybody needs. So when you hear that, Josh, <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's like the best actor statement you could ever hear. I mean, what's it like working with the actors and actresses out there to the good and to the bad? And, and, and it, you know, for those who are actors out there, not only in our audience, but certainly the ones who will watch this later, what are some tips and tricks that they can take from a director that will allow them to do their job better for you? Oh, for sure. Directors are not perfect. Uh, they're not going to communicate the exact thing they need. It mean, might take take after take because uh, a lot of actors at the film prize know exactly what they're doing. So don't just go like hiring your buddy because he wants you to be in a, you know, in a <laughs> film. Uh, he may not be the, the best role, but you find, find someone who's done multiple roles, if it's short films or commercials. There's like a, a way about set that they know that when they say action, they're ready to go. They're ready to, to get into character. So... Did that answer the question? I'm going to ask it again, Josh. Just can you um, uh, <laughs> so the idea of just making sure, like, those tips and trips that you could give an actor and actress yes. just to work better with you. Um, oh, that, with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If oh, somebody, God. I mean, and again, I mean, there's a lot of expertise on this panel. Making sure that, that especially, I mean, we have actors in our audience. We have directors who will be watching this. What is a, a bit of a playbook? And, and by the way, it's not even for Film Prize Junior. It's also for Film Prize. I mean, people really need to know a way to be successful. I think that directors certainly are that, that tip of the spear. You've done such a great job with that. What are some things you could tell an actor or actress or even a director on how to work together and be successful? Be successful. So for me specifically, um, I want to tell the actor the motivation and let them kind of ride that out. And if they're an actor that's been working, they're going to find that motivation that's in the script. And I won't have to do that much directing besides like blocking. Like, all right, you go from over here and the camera's going to land here. And if they're bringing it out, then that's what I want. That you have what I need. Uh, there are times where it's like a, a line isn't working because like either I wrote it or someone else wrote it and we need to adjust it because it just doesn't sound natural because it wasn't written natural. And a lot of times actors have 
uh, something to say. So if you have something to say to the director, feel free to do that, especially for my sets. I don't want people to think that you can't be open and be like, hey, what if I said this? Uh, yeah, definitely be okay with that. And directors, too, be okay with people coming up to you and, and being like, hey, what if I said it this way? You know, it, unless it's some guy off the street. Like, if he's not in your crew or whatever, then probably don't <laughs> listen to him, <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> but, yeah, be open to suggestions. That's, That's it. That's right. Don't listen to people walking off the street and right. tell you what to Like, if I come off the street onto your set, be like, <laughs> no, Josh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, you should we're good. stay back over there. Um, uh, Hillary, did you find that you had latitude working on Green's Alley as an actress? Maybe for future projects, possibly. Um, as of when, uh, since it was my first film, I was just kind of at the whim of everybody else. It's like, whatever you need me to do, I got you. That's so. awesome. So mm -hmm. Patrick, someone who hasn't, just didn't make their first film, but has made a, a phalanx of them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm curious if what Josh said is something that resonates with you, or is it something where you find that there is a better way to work with you from the perspective of a director? I think, uh, I think, yeah, a lot of what he had, uh, what he said, because I've worked with him and we worked very well together. Um, but you really kind of have to read the room on every project you go into. Um, I think a director, and this is very rare, a director who's not really wanting you to deviate from anything they have on the script or uh, doing it the way they want you to do it. I mean, I've had directors try to give me line readings on how to do things, and that's the quickest way to shut down an actor. It really is, because you have to have a trust with your director, and the director has to trust your actor. Um, but for the most part, I do find that directors are very willing to uh, talk to the actor and say, how do you feel about this? And if you want to put this in your own words, but make sure you say this, you know, do whatever makes you comfortable. So, yeah, I've, I've had for the most part, um, good communication with your director. It's very rare that you don't, but it does happen. I'm, 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 I'm gonna flip the script on you a bit, um, pun intended. Um, uh, can, you, can you make a TikTok about that? <laughs> can you? Right yeah, there, that's right. Um, um, uh, so as a director, same, same question, but with uh, working with actors. Yeah, I think coming into this project that we just did and, and are currently uh, editing, uh, being an actor, helped me work with the actors better because I kind of know what works uh, for me. So I can only assume that uh, I, I know what it's like to be an actor on a set. Um, it can be very nerve wracking because, you know, most of the times you're working with people you don't know and it's a very vulnerable position to be in. Uh, with Film Prize, you pretty much know everybody. But I've been on big sets where I walk in and there's 200 people around and I don't know any of them. And it's, it's, it's an environment to be judged and uh, that's always on the back of your mind. But I think as an actor, uh, it really helped me direct because I know how, um, kind of what actors are going through. Yeah, and you know, same, a similar question to you, Hillary. How do you want to be directed? I mean, you've made your film, you were at the whim of everyone. I don't know if that's the strategy you want to go at the next time. Uh, maybe, you know, more structured or, or, I mean, how do you want to take directions from a director, given that there might be actors out there that also want to be able to communicate with a Patrick or a Josh as they march forward with their projects? Um, I think that just kind of goes for life, but just treat people like people, get on their level. Um, if I'm going to be directed at, I don't want to be told or demanded directions. You know, I want you to come at my level and, you know, just approach me and just be like, hey, maybe instead of trying it this way, what if you could try it this way? You know, just, just see them eye to eye um, and just remember that the director is a person and the actor is a person and there needs to be a respectful relationship in that regard. Well, we'll t talk just a bit more about, that's interesting. I mean, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm checking to see if anyone's wincing or if they're nodding or whatever, but, it, you know, it's... It's nodding or is it wincing? It's, it's the, the idea of sort of coming down to someone's level. What like that is for you guys to, is it a communication? Is it a connection? Is it a? I think filmmaking just as in general is a symbiotic relationship between everybody. Like everyone has to be able to work together. They have to meet eye to eye. They have to be willing and open and flexible to other people's ideas. Um, so yeah, just 
It's just a matter of kind of embracing um, other people's recommendations, hoping that they maybe embrace your recommendations. Um, I hope that's answering the question. No, 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 100%. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious if, if there is, Josh, running a set like you run a set, connecting with the actors that you connect, is that something that oh, yeah. is simpatico? What does that mean? That means simpatico. Um, Did simpatico. You make that up. I, 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 well, um, maybe. Um, I, if if not, it'll be in either the Urban Dictionary or on the Google Dictionary. <laughs> like you know, maybe it's already there. I mean, in the sense that there is sort of like, are you kind of reading sort of a? Is that true? Oh yeah, me? every actor's different. So. Yeah. Uh, some actors get into character a lot faster. So if you're doing coverage for it's like you got to shoot two people and they're talking, one of them may be like the first couple takes, they get it. It's golden. Uh, so you want to film their stuff first. So it's about knowing the, the, the actor's kind of routine and what they uh, can uh, get into character faster or longer. I think I heard Ron Howard say this at one of his, uh, at the, what was that thing we went to? Adobe Max. Yeah. And he was speaking there and he gave a lot of tips uh, for free. It, you know, so <laughs> good on him. He said that some actors take longer to get into character, so he films uh, them last. So he'll get the coverage of everyone else, and he knows that this actor is going to be like needing some takes, and so he gets the wide, he gets the, the coverage, and then he goes to him. And there are actors like that, and uh, you may be thinking to yourself, like, oh, well, I want to get actors who just do it first take, you know? It's like, but sometimes the good actors, they need a little bit of time to get in the character. Yeah. Same same question to you, Patrick. Do you do you find that what Hillary was talking about about getting level does it work as an actor and does it work as a director for you? Well, I think uh, I've never run across a director who doesn't have respect or like actors because if they don't, they're in the wrong business. <laughs> um, so I go into it. I'm, yes, there's a there's a deference to a director in a way, but. I have to go in confidence that I can talk to a director one on one as peers, as equals, because we're both making this together. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's got to be a mutual respect. And um, I, I think she's exactly right. It's got to be, we're both people, we're both professionals. Uh, you wouldn't have hired me if you didn't think I could do this. Uh, so, you know, treat me that way. And for the most part, they do. And, and I give them the reverence they they deserve as well so cool so we're gonna um go to the audience see if there are any questions and um if not i can ask questions all day long but i mean we're going to be wrapping up in a few minutes and again uh, production islands could be starting if you're in the one o'clock session and we've got lunch in the vip room but you know i am curious if you were to give everyone in this audience um and again the ones who are here but also the ones who will be checking this out later that one piece of advice that would really help them through your experience not to make the same mistakes, right? Or not, or even to get past those minor hiccups, you know, philosophically or, you know, something that is less spiritual, more practical. Um, think about that one piece of, of advice. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Yes. That's a great question. I'm gonna, yeah. That's a phenomenal question. I'm going to read it. I'm going to say it again for, for the for the video audience too. Is that the question is is have things ever gone wrong in a sense? And there has been sort of an amicable breakup. I guess is just to to steal a term. Um, and how does that sort of also play out in the production too? Because that can certainly change things. Yeah, I, I'll say. Um, as an actor, I've been on a set, and I have to be very careful how I say this. Uh, the names are not real, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a it was a shoot, and the director um, and I and another person, um, I'll call it a member of their family, uh, were in a room, and I was getting ready to shoot my scene. And that's a time of reflection and getting ready to do what you're going to do. And these two people got into a huge fight right in front of me. And it got ugly. And things were said to each other that no one should ever say to a family member. And I was horrified. I was embarrassed. I was thrown off my game. 
And it was so bad that when I got to set, the director couldn't come to the set. They were so upset. So another crew member had to direct the scene. And it took a while to shake that. It's like, if you have some grievances, don't do it in front of your cast. Don't do it in front of your crew. Try not to do it on set at all. Take it somewhere private. And uh, because that was a very uncomfortable situation. Wait, what, what, what about that idea, Josh, of like that amicable breakup? We had that with uh, when we were first starting with, uh, with a web series. We didn't know what we were doing. We hired a guy who was not an actor. And he was like, we did six episodes of it. And around episode three, he's like, hey, I'm moving to L.A. now. And we're like, oh, well, we got like three more episodes. Could you stick around? And he was like, no, I'm gone. And so we had to literally change everything about the, his scenes uh, to accommodate that. So that was a big lesson learned. Don't hire people who aren't actors, if I haven't already said that yeah. a zillion times. Does that answer that question? Yes. Well, that comes with communication. Well, 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 well let, let me repeat the audience for the, the question for the audience uh, out there. The question is, and, and listen, it happens a lot with student, certainly film prize films, at least the way the film prize has been built with the community that we have here and the wonderful independent filmmakers that exist. Just a lot of them are married, right? And um, what's that like working with family and how do you sort of move through it and really have, you know, put out the most effective results, but while also taking care of someone you love? Right, and they, they heard that? You yes. repeat it for them? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Good. So now I can. Yes. Communication is the biggest thing when working with someone who you're close to. Because you don't want the, um, I thought I told you to do this, or <laughs> why didn't you do this? And there's all these what ifs. And also doubts. You want to clear any kind of doubt by communicating your intentions, what you want, and being open to responses that may get on your nerves because you're like, no, this is my thing and you're just giving me some advice on it and you think it sucks or whatever. Because <laughs> sometimes the communication is like, you'll say, hey, I got this project and the response is like, uh, okay. You know, just kind of, you're like, oh, that's not the response I wanted. I want you to think it's the best thing I've ever made. So communication is the biggest thing is m reaching a mutual understanding with the person of uh, whoever it may be that you don't have to say it's the greatest thing ever made but an understanding of this is how I like to communicate. Understanding their communication skills and yours and finding that middle ground of like, please don't tell me it sucks. Tell me that there's work to be done or give me advice or someone to help me with the said project. Yeah, just don't tell people that their stuff sucks. You know. I, and same question to you, Patrick. You've certainly embedded your family. I mean, your family, that you, it's kind of a, it's a tradition with your family. I mean, right. ha Haley actually has written a, 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 one of the scripts that got into the top 20. Right, right. Uh, uh, Patrick's daughter. Um, so it is, it's, it's in the culture of your family. What's that like sort of working together and how do you make that work? Well, it's kind of like um, Facebook. It's like you only put the really good parts of your life out there for the public <laughs> to see. Um, we had some pretty intense discussions, all four of us, uh, leading up to this film. Uh, my wife and I are both, uh, we had opinions on this vision that we both are doing. And um, we just decided up front, we will debate strongly, we will argue if we have to, but we're going to do it at home. Once we get to the set, we're a united front, and uh, if you have a problem, pull me aside, don't do, I will, and I told her, I said, I'll never embarrass you in front of a uh, crew, don't embarrass me in front of a crew, and um, I mean, but once we got on set, we worked beautifully because we hashed all that out, and we got to set knowing what we wanted, um, and it was funny because one of the crew, uh, I think it was Taylor, came up and said, we were all waiting to see how long it would take for the curtains to fight on set, <laughs> you know. And she goes, we were surprised you never did. Yeah. And it's like, well, we, we did all the homework before we got there. The curtains are the Von Trapps of the <laughs> film prize. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to um, uh, wrap this up. And uh, again, that question that hopefully has been sort of uh, uh, marinating in the cerebrum. Those are both words that I did not make up, Josh. Um, we'll see about that. <laughs> that's right. Um, and uh, I'm just curious about that one piece of advice that you would give those filmmakers, those actors out there to really, you know, 
get through something and you know again filmmaking is all about starting something and finishing something and how they get from A to Z in the best way possible and what's that one thing that you can tell them that will get them there um, do you want to do you want to start Hillary um, be adaptable be flexible be open to communication be prepared to be on your feet for a really long time and be prepared for a lot of downtime as well <laughs> there we go very good very good Josh so I want to come back to the communication thing, but in a different way, okay. because you're going to have to stick your neck out. You're going to have to put your nose down to the ground. If you're just starting, you're going to have to get involved with people. And if you're a nervous type, you got to kind of push yourself to that limit to talk to people and be like, all right, well, what's the project you're working on? Kind of, I don't want to say bully your way into it, but it's like you have to get in there somehow. Put yourself in between someone who is making a project and put yourself in front of them. And that's the one thing I can say to get started is be good at communicating and making connections and, and marketing yourself, basically. Yeah. Patrick, bring us home. I got two things. Uh, first of all, do not afraid to not be the smartest person in the room. Um, you've got to hire people who know a whole lot more than you or your film will suffer. Uh, because if you go in thinking you know everything, you're going to set yourself up for failure. Second, I think as much fun as filmmaking is, it's a blast. The hardest thing about filmmaking is your stamina, um, mentally and physically. You're going to be tired. Your brain is just going to be stretched a thousand different ways, which is why if you prep early and have things worked out in your head, when somebody comes up to you with an issue and you've been filming for 12 hours and you're just exhausted, it'll be easier to come up with an answer. Um, so that's, that's it. I love that. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big, huge hand for Patrick Kurt and Josh Munz and Hillary Frazier. They did such a fantastic job.